Graphic videos from the scene of a mass shooting left up for more than 24 hours after the attack. One video showed dead bodies of victims, including what appeared to be children. Another showed the perpetrator lying dead on the ground. Both clips visible at or near the top of search results on Twitter after the news broke. Many users now expressing shock at how easily the footage spread, mostly without content warnings. Within hours of a mass shooting at a Texas outlet mall, some Twitter users shared gruesome pictures of bloodied bodies from the crime scene. At least one image appeared to be of a child. According to some users, the images were hard to avoid because most were shared from accounts that had paid to be verified, an option introduced under owner Elon Musk that can elevate the visibility of a user's tweets. Emily Bell, director of the Tau Center for Digital Journalism at Columbia University, tweeting, graphic material often found its way onto Twitter in the past, but it was more likely to be downranked and hard to find. The new screwed up system seems to prioritize these vile accounts and presents material at the top of the feed awful. In an effort to prevent others from inadvertently seeing the video, some Twitter users tweeted screenshots of the first moments, warning of what was ahead. The videos containing the most graphic shots of dead bodies have been disappearing from the platform, but Trending Now did a quick search on Twitter today to see if the video was still around, and it only took about 20 minutes to find it. The apparent spread of these images have revived scrutiny around how social media platforms handle graphic content. Social media platforms typically have policies that restrict sharing graphic content, with certain exceptions. On Twitter, for example, users are technically prohibited from sharing content that shows gratuitous gore, a category that includes dismembered or mutilated humans. The video in question appears to be a violation of Twitter's terms of service, which also say media is prohibited if it has the potential to normalize violence and cause distress to those who view them. Musk has described himself as a free speech absolutist, but it's unclear whether allowing such footage to circulate was deliberate or the result of recent cuts to the company's content moderation team. Staff cuts at Twitter mean the company no longer has the expertise to advise on content removal or when to add warning messages on sensitive and graphic content, though it is still happening sporadically. Meanwhile, some governments are working to fight for better content moderation, the European Union has passed their Digital Services Act, something that will force platforms to put measures in place to fight illegal content or face sweeping fines. Here to speak more about this topic is Michael Smith, Professor of Information Technology and Marketing at Carnegie Mellon University. First and foremost, why is it important to have content moderators on social media sites? Well, because a lot of really horrible things can get posted to social media sites that A, people don't want to see, and B, people shouldn't see. Um, and there has to be some level of control to stop that from happening. A lot of people who use these sites like Facebook and Twitter like to refer to content moderation as censorship. Can you explain to our viewers why this is not the case? That's a great question. So the Oxford English Dictionary definition of censorship is the prohibition of books, films, or news that are considered obscene, politically unacceptable, or a threat to security. Let me make the somewhat provocative statement that I think we need some level of censorship as a society. Um, the question is how much and how to keep control over that from a steady slide into author authoritarianism versus a steady sli slide into you know, a content that is harmful for society and harmful for individuals. So while content moderation can seem like censorship, what a lot of people forget is that these social media sites are businesses and not just open forums. Oh, and, and that's another fascinating question. So, so there are a bunch of things that you wouldn't show on your news platform. And you wouldn't show that because there's there's a level of regulation from the government, A. B, you want to protect your brand. And, and C, you're, you're good people who actually want to inform, you know, in, inform users of the facts, right? I'm not sure we can make any of those assumptions about social media. 
Um, we have thus far said any regulation on what can be posted on social media is bad. So we don't have the same regulations. There's a lot of issues around social media platforms setting up their brand around the notion that you can find anything here. Um, and then I'm not sure we can assume the people running these platforms are interested in the best interest of, of, of society as much as they are in, in making profit. And Tucker Carlson is a great example of where content moderation can fail on social media when users like him are allowed to post doctored videos and blatant lies online. Who does that hurt and who does it protect? Well, it, it hurts, I think, our social discourse. Uh, as, as an exercise in class, uh, heading up to the, the last presidential election, every morning I took a snapshot of CNN and Fox News. And when you look at those snapshots side by side, what you realize is someone who read one would have no idea how to talk to someone who just read the other. Um, that's a real problem for us as society. We don't share the same set of facts. Uh, and it used to be the case that it was really hard to get embedded in a rabbit hole of, of people who all reinforced your pre your presuppositions. Now it's actually very easy online to get into those sorts of rabbit holes. I mean, what's fascinating is we've released these algorithms on society, um, algorithms that do a really good job of encouraging you to click on things. And what we've discovered as a society is people are likely to click on things that either confirm their pre-existing beliefs about how the world works or that make them angry. Um, and so now we have a whole bunch of algorithms who are doing exactly what they're told to do. And a side effect is we're all a lot more insulated in our, in our views and we're a lot, all, all a lot more angry with each other. That's a problem. Thanks so much for speaking with us, Professor Smith. My pleasure, Kelly. Thank you for tackling an important social issue.